everybody. This is Glenda from Covestic. We will be getting started here in about one minute. So just hang on and we'll be with you shortly. Thanks. Okay, this is Glenda. It is 12 o'clock on the dot, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining this webinar today. We're really excited to talk to you about um, streamlining your retail operations. Um, I do want to start with saying we understand this is a hard time for everyone, and this is not a salesy uh, pro program today. We just want to give you guys some information that we think will help you now or whenever you're ready, because I know that everybody's business is doing different things right now. So uh, once again, I'm Glenda. I'm an account executive with Covestic, based here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And I would like to introduce you to my cohorts for our call today, Gary and James. James, do you want to introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, sure. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm James Devine. I'm the uh, CSM director for Covestic. I've been in the IT world for about 28 years, kind of showing my age there. Uh, I've been working with ServiceNow uh, from a partner capacity for the last 11, and I've been focused on CSM, customer service management, for about the last five years. Uh, so quite a bit of experience all across the platform, uh, and now I, I get to really focus on customer service management and the customer workflows that we're going to be talking about today. Gary, want to go next? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, Gary Tucker, I recently joined ServiceNow. I spent the last 10 years at Oracle with a real uh, focus on customer experience, and I'm looking forward to leveraging that experience um, here at ServiceNow, and it's just a great opportunity to um, to see the platform and stuff, so I'll get more into that later. All right, so a couple of uh, intro sections here before we get into the actual uh, content. Uh, just a quick intro about Covestic. I, I often tell people who ask me what it is that I do and who I work for, I say that you haven't heard of us, but you've heard of the companies that we work for. And I'll show a few of those here in just a moment. But we are a, uh, a consulting firm based out of Kirkland, Washington. So we are um, based in the Pacific Northwest, but our team is spread all across the United States. Uh, we've been uh, working as a IT service management consulting process, uh, DevOps consulting, uh, and managed services uh, since uh, 2001. We've been working with ServiceNow as a partner for, I believe, nine years, actually. Um, I'm going to check my dates on that, but I know it was before I started, and I've been there seven years. Uh, we have over 180 ServiceNow implementations uh, with an average CSAT of 9.5. That's something that we take a lot of pride in. Uh, but I think the thing that we take the most pride in is that, that stat you see there on the right where we have a 90% customer return rate. So not only are we uh, having satisfied customers when they finish their first implementation with us, but they uh, um, far more often than not want to continue building out their roadmap. So we, uh, we think that's a sign of, uh, of the quality that we deliver. So that's a little bit about who we are. Like I said, you've heard of the company that we work with. Uh, obviously, being Pacific Northwest, we do have a lot of uh, companies that are based there, but we also have uh, quite a few logos that are uh, spread all across this uh, great nation and beyond. 
Um, the, the two that I'm really focused on today here are in the, the retail operations space and everything that I'm going to be talking about from the streamlining uh, your operations comes from actual real world use cases that we've seen uh, with these two companies and, and others that we've been working with uh, in similar situations. Uh, so hopefully it's going to be good, useful information that you can borrow from uh, uh, the experiences of others. Uh, before we get into that, though, I do want to turn it over to Gary to talk a little bit about ServiceNow for those of you who aren't familiar with it. Sure, thanks. So, you know, Forbes um, awarded ServiceNow top 100 innovator, the number one spot, actually. ServiceNow, for the last 10 years, has really owned the ITSM market. They built an IT platform that supports internal users like nobody else can. And now, um, we're, you're seeing innovations into other areas, um, specifically customer service management, as we're going to focus on. So what, what, what we're doing is we're taking that great technology from supporting internal users and making it customer facing. So all of the great things like, um, you know, a self-service portal and the ability to chat and service internal customers, we're making it more customer friendly and making it where external facing. So James, if you go to the next slide. So what we know about organizations today is we work in a very unstructured environment. There's no single source of data. Um, you can see across the bottom there, we all have um, these applications that um, you know run our business. Uh, what's lacking is there's no, um, there's no flow between those those applications and the outside world so the back office there's no flow between the back office and the front office and that's exactly where the service now the now platform resides and bridges that gap between the back office and the front office so there in the green areas <clears throat> you see the platform um, and it it's we're every day innovating and bringing you in better technologies like AI and analytics and a knowledge base and mobile. And, and then on top of that, the platform is where our workflows lie. And these are out of the box um, with canned integrations to everything. And they, um, you know, I mentioned the IT workflow and the employee workflow and our biggest growth, you know, I hear numbers as high as 80% of growth coming from in within the customer workflow. And just as an example of a workflow, when I onboarded, um, you know, I come in and I they gave me a link to a portal and I logged in and it had, you know, a handful of action items I needed to do. I had to go take a drug test. I had to provide W-9 information. I had to provide um, income tax information. And, and every one of those had a process. So it went, I filled out my, my drug test, it went to an approver. I filled out my W-9 and went to another approver. And once I had all those completed, um, then it gave me another set of tasks. And all the way until it's kept, I kept getting new tasks all the way to the point of getting an offer letter. And so that's truly how a workflow, you know, works. And like I said, we were investing, we ServiceNow believes 80% of the growth is going to come from that last area of workflow. So we're taking what we've already been doing and making it customer facing. So you're going to see, and we're going to talk a lot today about how um, the customer workflows work. And one more, two more slides for me, James, please, sir. Um, and, and this is a great customer example that um, it's one of my accounts here in Dallas. And these guys deployed uh, the customer service tool into their contact center and immediately saw an increase in resolution rate and immediately saw a reduction in case volume just simply by being able to understand their cases and only opening cases that warranted um, that warranted a, a follow-up. So with a self-service portal and and being able to understand what types of cases they have, they were able to, to see that, that type of um, performance increases. And soon they'll be using, leveraging what, you know, uh, the field service tool 
So when a, 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 a someone calls in, if it warrants an engineer, they'll be able to dispatch an engineer um, and, and, and create a ticket uh, and it flows right through the CSM workflow. So do I have one more, James? Yeah, so this this really is, you know, when I first read this, I thought it was just a bit gimmicky marketing, but truly it is what ServiceNow does. We make the world of work work better for people. We take all of those spreadsheets that companies um, send from the back office to the front office and all the emails and all the Slack and all the other tools that are used um, to to bring information that creates frustration for both employees and customers. And we've put them into a workflow and we allow you to design these workflows where when the business needs a change, it doesn't take, you know, eight months for a business to have a change. A business wants a change and it can be accomplished by creating a workflow without IT involvement, you know, probably within a few hours in a lot of cases. I think that's it for me, James. So back to you. Yeah, thanks, Gary. I'm actually going to tell a story here in just a couple minutes about uh, how, how ServiceNow really did uh, uh, make a, a tremendous impact on people. Uh, but before that, um, I do want to talk about the uh, the fact that when we started planning this webinar, the content that was going to be in it uh, uh, was before the world turned upside down and everything that we thought we knew was wrong. Uh, we, we were talking about streamlining retail operations and all of the really uh, awesome functionality that you can get from the, the ServiceNow platform in addition to uh, the traditional customer service management being the call center case handling. Uh, there's a lot more that you can do from a retail operations standpoint if you're managing uh, a large amount of locations across wide geographic areas. Um, you know, we, we, we recognize then that having uh, the ability to be agile uh, with your processes and your tools was very important. And I think what we've seen over the past uh, couple of months, I'm sure everybody will agree, is that that need uh, has just really been underscored. Uh, just being able to uh, to be flexible, to adapt to the, to the changing markets has become uh, uh, crucial. So, you know, with, with that in mind, um, I do want to uh, talk about some situations that we've seen and some things that ServiceNow can help you do if you have, have the system leverage and you have the right processes in, in place for it. Um, so, you know, I teased up a story that I was going to tell. I actually uh, heard, uh, heard of this from a friend of mine who's not in the IT world, uh, actually happens to, to work for a, a bank. Uh, many of you are familiar with the, uh, the recent uh, legislation that passed the uh, SBA PPP loans, the Emergency Payroll Protection uh, Loans for Small Businesses. And uh, if, you, if you were uh, paying attention when all that transpired, uh, the, uh, the legislation uh, leveraged the existing relationship with banks to handle the processing of loan applications for, for the SBA rather than the SBA doing it uh, centrally. Uh, so very quickly, every bank that does business with the SBA had to adapt to handling a huge influx of, of loans uh, and loan requests, and they had to do all the, uh, the processing and underwriting for it. Um, and there were several banks, several large banks that really uh, uh, struggled to adapt, and there, there's uh, all kinds of bad press for a few that uh, that uh, had a lot of trouble handling the uh, the load. A lot of the smaller banks, community banks, really struggled to uh, to be able to handle it because they didn't have the systems or processes. But there is one uh, that I actually happen to be a customer of that is also a ServiceNow customer, and they were able to uh, repurpose an existing workflow over over a weekend and use that then to deputize every one of their branch managers uh, to become underwriters. And uh, with that combination of the, uh, the, the technology supporting their, their agility and their processes, allowed them to process 64,000 small business loan applications in 48 hours. Uh, so while a lot of other banks were struggling with this, they were actually able to take care of their customers very, very quickly. And you know, this is a situation where the, the outcome of this is, is huge because for a lot of these small businesses that were applying for this, it was a, it was a question of survival. If they didn't get these, they weren't, uh, weren't going to be able to make it. And as we saw, 
uh, that fund, the initial fund, ran out of uh, uh, money pretty quickly. So they've actually had to uh, to restock that. So you know, I just think that, that that just shows a lot of capability from not just the, uh, the, the bank standpoint, but what ServiceNow can do to help people be very uh, responsive to changing situations. It's a perfect example of what I mentioned earlier about business being able to uh, make a change very rapidly for a business need. And that's a perfect example of that. In fact, that was something we then took further and offered it as a free app to, to other financial institutions. But just a perfect example, a business comes to a need and how quickly um, the workflow, the tool allows you to, to fit that need, fill that need. All right, good deal. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and queue up the uh, the five areas that we want to talk about today. Um, specifically, this is specific to uh, utilizing not, not just the customer service management uh, suite of tools, but other parts of the platform uh, to enhance retail operations. So some of the things that we're going to talk about here are specific to customer service, and some of these things are actually outside of that suite, uh, but all of them are centered around being able to, uh, to leverage the customer workflows to, uh, to unify a lot of your systems and processes. Uh, again, customer service uh, being one small part of the ServiceNow offering, I guess maybe not a small part, it's definitely a growing part, and I've been on it for five or six years now, so you really can't say that it's even a new part, but it is definitely growing in capabilities. Uh, it, uh, it is where anytime that you are leveraging ServiceNow to provide functionality to people who work outside of your organization meets the, the standard for it being a customer service management uh, uh, application. So uh, in the retail space, if you happen to have uh, franchises, uh, if, if you are managing franchise locations, the franchise owners or owner companies aren't necessarily employees of your organization, they are external. Um, so they're going to have their own uh, identity management. They're probably not going to be on your on your network. They're probably not going to be in your AD. So you need to be able to provide service to them. Uh, and the customer service management module is actually set up to do that very well. And that's part of one of the use cases that we'll talk about. Um, but even even so, um, you know, this uh, this is a bit of an eye chart. But this shows uh, all of the different areas that ServiceNow offers capabilities all of which are centered around some really amazing technologies. And you saw the slide that uh, ServiceNow is ranked the number one most innovative company by Forbes. When, when I saw that, I was uh, actually a little taken aback, even though I've been working with ServiceNow for 11 years and I've been amazed at the, uh, the growth and the uh, uh, trajectory that it's been on that, in that time. Uh, my first thought was, wow, that means that uh, ServiceNow is considered to be more innovative than Tesla and Apple and Google. And you know, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, yeah, that, that's actually legitimate because when you look at what ServiceNow is investing in and what they're adding to what was already a great task management tool uh, and a great IT service management tool, things like the artificial intelligence and the business, uh, business intelligence, uh, the, the new flow designer integration hub where you can do uh, codeless integrations uh, very, very quickly things that back in my programmer days would have taken weeks to accomplish, you can do now in minutes. Um, just a lot of these things that are uh, taking what was already a great tool and adding quite a bit more capability to it. So uh, all of that supports not just the customer service management and the intelligent apps, but also everything else that you see around here. So uh, IT service management, which was traditionally the sweet spot for service now, um, the asset management, IT operations, security, all of these things can now be on, on one platform in addition to the ability to be able to create your own uh, intelligent apps for specific use cases. <coughs> all right, so now I'm gonna talk about these, uh, these five areas that we promised. Uh, again, all of these are real world scenarios. Uh, these are things that are, are either already implemented with our clients or are in the process of being implemented. So these aren't uh, pie in the sky, um, uh, unapproachable ideas. These are things that are really happening on the ServiceNow platform today that uh, we think a lot of you that are, are watching today would be able to make use of. So we're gonna start with store operations. 
Uh, Gary mentioned the uh, employee onboarding and anybody who's been working in ServiceNow for a while and has done an onboarding workflow for either the IT onboarding or the HR employee onboarding knows that there's a, a lot of steps that go along with that. Um, you know, obviously, if you are onboarding a new franchise or a new location, there are a lot of things that have to happen. There's things like uh, uh, securing the, the furniture and the training and the, uh, the marketing and everything that goes along with that. So having a, uh, a rigid workflow that will make sure that happens the, the same way, the same time, every time uh, is definitely a, a value add. Um, yes, th this can be done in other tools. There are a lot of people who use uh, a Microsoft project or even Excel to manage these types of things. Um, and while yes, that works, uh, not having the visibility across the infrastructure to see what's being worked on, not being able to tie that back to uh, cases, not being able to tie that back to expenses. Now, all of that uh, is a, a big silo that ServiceNow really helps to overcome. Uh, another one, uh, asset management at the store level. So being able to keep track of what does the, the store have as far as point of sale? What do they have as far as uh, appliances? What are the warranties associated with that? Uh, being able to leverage the asset management functionality that's been part of ServiceNow for years for the external store asset management is a uh, another uh, huge win for for the organizations that are doing this and that actually ties into uh, something else we'll talk about in just a minute and then shared knowledge i think we're starting to see a lot of organizations getting away from um, static uh, knowledge articles to more of a kcs kcs, KCS centric uh, knowledge where it's more uh, wiki style crowdsourced and malleable so that you can be real time up to date with your shared knowledge and being able to make sure that operations uh, are being followed and if they need to be updated that that's being done in a very quick and responsive manner customer relations can't can't talk enough about customer relations I think uh, we've all seen how a, um, uh, a negative uh, experience for a customer can very quickly uh, turn into a big issue. If somebody takes their grievance to social media, that can have some serious damage and serious impacts to the brand and, and a real loss of revenue. So it's important to be very proactive about how you handle your customer service. And there are some very creative ways that uh, our people are, are leveraging service now to do that. Obviously, we have the case management process, which is the, the B2C model here. So it is the consumer who we are able to handle a, an issue for. Uh, so obviously, they can do that through phone. Uh, we can leverage the, the uh, uh, portal functionality to give people the ability to submit uh, a, a, an issue or complaint through that. We can use request management. We have the virtual agent that can actually do a lot of case deflection. Uh, support chat can extend the capabilities of your, of your support team. A lot of things like that can really do that, but we're also starting to see that there's uh, opportunities to do things like in-store kiosk integrations to uh, to handle your survey data. So if you want to uh, keep track of what your customer satisfaction rate is and you want to do that with a, a simple three-button screen on a kiosk on the way out the door, we can actually do that and tie that directly back to uh, your operations within ServiceNow uh, using the survey engine. So a lot of really good and creative things are being done in the, uh, the B2C area. And then I do want to touch briefly on the CCPA and GDPR compliance. Um, I think uh, this is probably a bit more top of mind a couple of months ago before all the craziness started, but uh, obviously GDPR has been in effect for Europe for a couple of years now. Uh, California passed the CCPA requirement, so this is the uh, requirement that allow that uh, makes businesses be responsive to customers' requests to uh, either produce what is known about them or to make them forget about their data. Uh, so these privacy requests are are uh, becoming the law, and companies have to be able to respond to that. So we've actually been leveraging ServiceNow as the not just the intake for handling the requests, but also driving the workflow. In fact, we have one customer that has over 300 steps involved with them complying with a, a CCPA request. Um, if they didn't have a workflow engine like ServiceNow to be able to track that, the, the amount of manual labor to, uh, to accomplish this would be crippling for them or they would be out of compliance. So you know, just having that as an add-on in addition to all the other customer service functions that we have for the, the B2C model is definitely a, uh, a value to, uh, to the customers. Hey, James, before you move off of that, I, I want to be clear that this customer, we've talked a lot about 
a platform. I want to be clear that this customer service management and in our other workflows are in a lot of cases used standalone. So they do all these things that you mentioned, an agent desktop, a virtual agent, a support chat, uh, all within the standalone customer service management tool. Uh, the platform is is simply becomes icing on the cake when it's when it's in conjunction with the platform. It really does, like I said earlier, bridge that gap between the back office, but very much a standalone product. And the value Convestic brings is Obviously, you know, we've talked about uh, the product being a great product. These guys bring not only product expertise, but industry knowledge and industry expertise. James talked about things like retail kiosk. So marrying you know, things outside of uh, within the industry, using their experience with all the other retail companies that they've seen and marrying that to the to the uh, to the, the things that the product can do is a, is a really positive thing. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, Gary. And, and yeah, you know, this is where things like having a roadmap uh, is, is essential. And I do see a lot of organizations, whether they're leveraging ServiceNow or another platform to do case management, uh, they get there and then they stop and they don't start building on to that. And I think those, those organizations are re really missing out on a lot of uh, on the, the major return on investment that you can get if you start to leverage the, the additional features that you have beyond just the, the base uh, case management capabilities. All right, so I want to get into uh, our store support. So this is the, the B2B side of the house. So we talked about handling customer concerns at the, at the store level, but you know, also managing uh, work for the, the, um, the managers, the stores, the employees of the stores. That's traditionally been problematic because organizations haven't had a good way to keep track of who's coming and going, especially if they are uh, independent and franchise locations. Then you know, obviously the turnover rate's pretty significant. So just having access to, uh, to giving them access to a community portal or a service portal is uh, is tricky. But fortunately, ServiceNow actually has a lot of capabilities out of the box that will will push that management back onto the store so that it doesn't become a burden on the home office to try and, and uh, uh, maintain that information. So that actually uh, gets rid of that hurdle so that you can actually get people into the, uh, the portal where they can make use of communities. And within communities, if you haven't seen the communities functions in ServiceNow, the uh, gamification is outstanding. There's lots of ways that you can actually get real value, not just sharing the ideas, which has a lot of value on its own, but also uh, if people have um, good enhancements or suggestions to uh, operations or processes using the ideation tools and, and pushing that into the, uh, the the project management suite and service now is actually uh, a game changer for a lot of organizations because you know, I think all too often, we, we let the people at the corporate level uh, make the planning and, and they're the ones calling the shots, but it's the people who are at the customer level and, and, and in the trenches that actually have the, the great ideas. And oftentimes, there's not a great way to capture and analyze those. Um, requesting a service call. I'm going to talk about field service and how that fits into this here on the next slide, but that's a, a great thing to be able to allow the uh, um, the managers or employees to be able to do uh, directly through the, uh, the the portal and not have to have people manning the phone or handling that through inboxes uh, on, on the corporate side. Targeted communications, uh, you know, one of the organizations we deal with uh, has a, a lot of food safety alerts and they need to make sure that uh, if there's a supplier that's sending, um, let's just say, uh, a head of lettuce to uh, uh, to a store and there's a, a safety recall, we need to make sure that that gets targeted directly to those stores with confirmation. So being able to make use of targeted communications on top of the, uh, the case management there is also huge. And again, at, at the root of this is still handling case management. So if we have unstructured cases that we need to do resolution for, we still have that capability and we get to make use of all the uh, uh, the functions that come along with the agent workspace to do the predictive intelligence and and uh, agent assist. So, um, you know, ma massive opportunity here to improve the store support model. So that improves not not just making the stores happier and more effective, it also reduces cost at the at the uh, corporate uh, level as well. All right. So, yep, calls, right. I was just going to say, sorry, a few a huge 
uh, way to deflect calls, answer some of the easy, the top five questions typically can be handled by a self-service portal. So the deflection becomes, you know, as high as 70% at that use of that. Absolutely. And, you know, deflection gets a bad rap because people think we just don't want to provide service. We don't want to have somebody talk to an agent. But uh, all the all the evidence shows that customers don't really want to talk to an agent. They don't want to submit a case and wait two days for a response. If they can get immediate satisfaction, they're much happier. We're happier because we didn't have to have the expense of that, uh, that support call. So there's an, a, a lot of a uh, lot of value to be gained by uh, doing good, positive call deflection. All right, so imagine this scenario, a store manager having a critical issue with the point of sale, they're not able to pro process credit cards. Uh, if they are able to either pick up the phone and call the support desk or get on the portal and submit a priority one case, it gets routed immediately to the appropriate team. Uh, if they need to involve the IT section, they, they can do that. Uh, if the ultimate determination is that there needs to be a field agent sent out to replace a part, whether that's a, uh, a corporate employee or if it's a third-party vendor, um, having the, the field management system, uh, field service management be able to route all of that as far as the work order and the routing and the, uh, the dispatch, um, that's, that's a beautiful thing because that slows, uh, that speeds up the, uh, the time to get somebody on site to fix that. And if you are not able to process credit cards because of a, an outage, you want to get that uh, resolved as quickly as possible. So having uh, the field service tied to IT, tied to customer support is a, uh, another, another one of these game changer opportunities where you can see significant dollars being recouped on these situations where uh, we immediately need to get somebody dispatched. We also have always had vendor management in the system, the ability to be able to track vendor performance, vendor compliance, that sort of thing. Uh, we have great dashboards that show uh, how well vendors are performing, so whether or not the vendors are being managed at the corporate level, if they're being handled managed at the store level, you can still have the metrics in there to see if there's opportunities to uh, to consolidate or to uh, put out for bid. There's a lot of things that buyers can use as a result of leveraging vendor management on top of the, the other parts of the suite we've been talking to. And then the, the last one here, this is a custom app that we have one of our clients has built. Uh, they are actually leveraging the contract management core to have a, a custom app for property and real estate management. So for uh, every one of their locations, they are tracking the, uh, the, the real estate, whether it's a lease or a purchase, they're tracking the taxes, they're tracking the, the uh, stipulations, they're making sure everything is being adhered to, and all of that is bubbled right back up to the account level, which is the store so that they can actually do um, a full 360 view to see what's going on in the store. And that's uh, not having the, uh, the uh, real estate management team working in a, in a silo, having that information as part of the, uh, the account can actually give everybody visibility to see if there are things that are gonna be uh, cost impacting. Okay, so uh, I would certainly be remiss if I didn't talk about um, the automation. And when I was uh, showing the, uh, the big oval tool that had all of the, uh, uh, the technology in the middle of the platform that supports all of the functionality, uh, we talked about uh, automation. Now, this is where we really start to remove manual labor, uh, does not value add from the process. If we can, uh, take some basic decisioning out of the hands of triage teams. If we can route uh, better so that we don't have to have cases rerouted, if we can get tasks to the right people quickly, obviously everybody wins in that situation. You get the the resolution, the customer gets the resolution faster. The uh, the, the company isn't spending time on uh, on manual labor, and obviously in this this day and age, we have to be able to make use of uh, of uh, resources very very. Um, uh, streamlined because we have uh, obviously there's a lot of a lot of uh, organizations that are being overwhelmed with uh, with uh, customer requests right now and a lot of them that are struggling with that so making sure we have ways to be um, intelligent about it is definitely a huge part of that uh, the value of the, the task assignment alone and then with the predictive intelligence this is one of my favorite uh, newer features of, of service now being able to leverage the entirety of your record history to be able to tell your agents, 
here is how you solve this issue, or better yet, here is an issue that is likely to happen. Let's prevent it before it happens. Being able to make use of the data that you already have using AI and machine learning is a, is it's, it's an, an enormous benefit. So you know that's one of those things that a lot of organizations keep on the aspirational part of their roadmap, and I think that's something that uh, more more and more organizations are trying to recognize the uh, the value of leveraging those uh, those those AI tools. And um, every every business is only as good as its uh, decision making, which is completely based off of the data. So having performance analytics there to to support your business intelligence is is a uh, uh, another key feature that's uh, this is one of the reasons that I love having the entire platform leveraged is because somebody sitting at the C level can actually see information that is uh, across the organization. We're not we're not stuck in silos, so we don't have um, you know bricks between the the engineering and the customer support teams anymore. We're all in the same system, and we can see. What, what the SLA performance is, where things are getting tied down, where is there opportunity for us to, to find uh, process improvements? And that's something we can, can really only get from a good business intelligence tool and performance analytics certainly, certainly meets that mark. All right, so I am going to start to wrap things up here. Um, given the, the short time frame that we have in today's session, we're not gonna do Q and A, but what we are going to do is have um, our, our lovely hostess, Glenda, is gonna be reaching out to people who have questions or concerns for follow-ups. Uh, everything that I've talked about here today, I would love to do a demo for. I knew I couldn't do demos for all of this in today's session and make it anything less than about eight hours. So if there's anything that you've seen here uh, that you're interested in, let's, uh, let's set up a time and I can actually take a deep dive into any, any one or more of these topics. So, Glenda, turning it over to you. Thank you, James. Um, thank you, Gary. I really appreciate y'all spending some time with us this afternoon. And as James said, we will be reaching out, or I will be reaching out to everyone to make sure you get a copy of the recording, um, as well as see if you have any questions, and then maybe we can set up some time for an assessment. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email. And I think that's it, everybody. Thanks for joining today. Really appreciate it. Did you? Yeah, so we've we talked about communities. It's important to, to know that we've got this knowledge product uh, uh, seminar coming up that I, um, in the past, it's always been on site. This year, it's going to be virtual. So if you haven't signed up, it's a great way to, there's no cost this year, no travel this year. It's going to go over a six-week period. So you can follow that link and register again, no charge, no travel. And, and 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 pick and choose what uh, sessions you want to attend. So it's really always a great event. Unfortunately, this year, I guess, or fortunately, it will be virtual. A great way, though, to meet your peers, hear the direction of ServiceNow, hear all of our executives talk, and literally today just came out the session picker. So you can create an agenda uh, and everything just by signing up. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Bye.